Hey guys, this is Sharpchain1 here, giving you the Roblox description tutorial. So, uh, I am now back for with another, uh, more tutorials. Sorry for the lack of tutorials over the past week or two. Uh, I was having trouble with my previous screen recorder. Now I'm using a different one called Open Broadcast Software. I use it for my streaming and stuff like that too, so I can use it for this one also. So, uh, today we're going to go over constraints and attachments. Now, these are, uh, constraints are like a new physics kind of thing that Roblox added about a month and a half ago, I think. And so, they can let you do a lot of cool things with them, like, you can, like, one thing we're going to go over today is like a rope constraint. So it'll make it so two parts like binded together, but one of them can swing, but they can swing freely from each other whilst being still being connected. Kind of like if, how you attach a rope from like uh, one thing to another thing, and it can swing. So let's go into studio. I think I'm gonna go over how to set it up. So first, let's create two parts in the workspace. One of them will be anchored. We're gonna name that one part one. And then let's move it into the air like that. The second one will be part two. And we're gonna make it surface smooth so it doesn't try to snap onto the base plate or anything. Alright, so we're gonna put that one to the air a little bit. So the first thing I need to go over are attachments, because you need to have attachments in order to uh, make constraints work. Now attachments are also kind of new. They're a little bit older than constraints. They came out uh, a little bit before those did. So oh, attachment is an instance that you can put inside of a part that tells the constraint or other things uh, how to connect with the other part. Like, so we're gonna do a rope constraint. So, we're, so basically what this attachment is gonna do is it's going to tell the constraint what part what where on the part to connect the rope to so to, to get one just go into the advanced objects and then look for attachment it should it should look like um like a like a plug that you plug into the wall kind of has that little eye has that icon to it if you can't find it in your advanced objects just type it in it, just type in att att it should show up so you need to have an attachment in both of the parts so what you need to do is now you need to tell it how you want how you want the constraint to attach to it. So by doing that, you can adjust the position. So its default is zero zero zero, which is the very center of the part. And also, Roblox has a thing that can show you where it's being, uh, where the position, where the thing actually is, where it's being attached to. But it has to be in a visible area. So we're gonna make it do. I want it to the constraint to attach to on the top middle of it right here so we just got to adjust the y-axis I'm just going to do uh, 0 0.50 zero. I'm going to go a little bit higher actually 0 0 let's not show that never mind I guess they don't do that or maybe in my settings yeah I think I have to adjust some settings you have to do some kind of settings in the Roblox studio settings to make that show up but I already know where this is going to show up. So we're, to do that, so to make it show up, or to make it attach to the top middle of right here, you just got to do uh, 0, 0, 0.50. And since we're going to attach uh, the anchored part, it's going to hang from the bottom of it. We got to do negative 0. We got to make the position 0, negative 0, 0.5. So now we have that. We're going to do the rest of it by script. Well, actually, I'm going to go over the API first of it in Google right here. So the rope constraint is one we're going to be using. So it says, a rope constraint constra constrains two attachments to separate no further than the length specified by the length. The attachments can move closer than this length and can both freely rotate. So the properties that it has right here is the current distance, which is read-only value, which means we cannot edit it with a script or manually or by any means. Uh, it just shows the current distance that there are between the two parts that are connected by the attachments. Uh, the length is the maximum distance the two parts can be from each other. Restitution is the elasticity. Um, attachment zero and attachment one. This it that's how 
uh, constraints know which attachments to use. It, it works. It works pretty similar similarly to uh, part to welds, like I uh, set the part zero and the part one, and enabled, which just makes it if it's active or not. And the rest of the stuff is just the same as any other. Um, just the same as any other instance. The functions are all the same, and so are the events. There's nothing special about those ones. It's just the properties. And these are the basic uh, properties for all of the constraints. Some of them have different properties that let you do different things. There is a bunch of different constraints. So I'll have to mention the advanced objects. So constraint. There is a ball socket constraint, hinge constraint, prismatic constraint, rod constraint, rope constraint, and spring constraint. They all work the same way, it's just that they have different properties that let you do different things. So I'm not going to go over all of them, I'm just going to go over like like this, like rope constraint and probably rod constraint. So in part one, we're going to create a script. I don't need to name it. So we're going to create the constraint. So we're going to do uh, constraint again. Or we're going to do con equals instance dot new rope constraint. And we're going to do put it in the uh, part one. So we got to set the attachment. So the, the two attachments it's going to be using. So con dot attachment I guess I sell it. Uh, zero equals script dot parent dot attachment, and then con dot attachment one equals workspace dot part two. So I just set them up. So now we're just gonna do a uh, run and see how it is. We're just gonna leave the other stuff at the default for now. Just press run, and it wait. Is bad cast. What did I do wrong? Oh, whoops! I know I did wrong. Oops. I forgot to make it say the attachment other part. Sorry about that. All right, so workspace dot part two dot attachment. There we go. Now that should do it. All right, so now they're just hanging there. If I so if I drag it away, it's gonna snap back, and then it'll do. It'll be able to swing. So what this also means is, let's see. Oh, as, as you can see, if you click on the constraint, it'll show how it's like rotating. It'll sh it'll show this. Um, how do you say it? It'll show the the distance between those. I guess it'll show how it's swinging. Like if it, if you were to attach a rope to this, it would sh showing how this would swing from each part to the next. And also that green thing right there that shows where it's connected to on that part. So we could change, I think we'd still be able to change this. Just change that to one. Yeah, there we go, see? Change it there. Oh, there we go. So now that we're in run mode, it actually shows where it's being attached, where the attachment is. So now that's that's where, that green part right there, that's where the constraint is attaching it to. It's attaching it to that position on the part. So you, get, so you have a lot of variety, I guess. The rotation, I haven't messed with that much. That seems to Anything. Yeah, I think the rotation is like had that yellow bar through it. I think I'm not changing anything at the moment. I haven't done much of that, but you guys can mess with that stuff on your own. So let's so let's set this back to zero, zero point five. So we'll go like that. And also, uh, these things, this stuff can be influence like the way it's swinging and stuff if you like if you bump it with your character or some other kind of part I believe that it should be able to move that around too and still and swing the correct way so what I'm gonna do we're gonna lower these down to where a character can reach it and we're gonna do play solo alright that's too yeah, it's too high, so we're gonna lower it. There we go, see? Yeah, move it. Let's try it again. You can go here, and we can do all kinds of stuff. It's pretty cool. You would be able to do this before this update using this instance called glue, 
which I've done before, but it's not a very uh, good way to do it. I mean, that was the only way there was back then, I think. But uh, glue was like really unstable and stuff, and things would sometimes fly all over the place and be useless. But this one is really good and reliable. So now let's, let's see what are the other properties. Let's see link, restitution. Let's mess with some of those uh, properties using the script. Let's change the maximum length. So we're gonna do con dot uh, length equals do 20 studs. And let's raise this higher. We're gonna do run. We don't need to play solo anymore. All right, so we go, it's hanging down farther like that and let's drag it like that or something or, I don't know, but there we go so now it's swinging on a lot in a much larger uh, area and it swings also a lot slower too because it's farther away and so you could as you can see you can make tons of stuff with this you could even make swings uh, one thing I, I saw in uh, Roblox developer conference I or something else, I don't, I don't remember where it was. But some guy uh, made some really cool, like, bridge using this stuff, like a rope bridge. So that it would, like, be all wobbly and things like that, kind of like how a how rope bridge really is when you walk across it. It was pretty cool. And so when he removed, like, one of the constraints and stuff, it would fall down into the river and things like that. It was pretty cool. So there's, a lots, of, there's lots of cool things you could do with this. So, uh, let's check out a rod constraint. back see what that does okay so what our constraint does wait let me see if any properties are different yeah okay so a rod constraint is almost exactly like a rope constraint it can, I believe it can rotate on all axes I think let's see yeah, so they can both rotate uh, along all axes. They can rotate any anyway, uh, except it they can it, its length is the maximum length. Like this length property right here that shows the maximum length, the rod constraint can only be at that length. They can't go any shorter than that because it's a rod. So give you an idea what that means. The rod constraint and then we'll run. It has the same properties except it doesn't have any restitution. It only has length and attachment zero and attachment one. So, so, so it can rotate like that, but it can't go, it's, it doesn't let it go any shorter than, uh, it doesn't, it doesn't go any shorter than the maximum length. It's always going to stay at that length, even if a player pushes it. So, show that. Let's bring it down like that. And we've got to lessen the length. We're going to make, keep it at, uh, its default. I want to play solo again. That's too high. Students. And let's make it actually a bit longer. Actually, no, that's fine right there. So if a player bumps it, it doesn't go any higher. It just swings. That's all it can do. So uh, that's all I have for you guys today for constraints. If this was a pretty short tutorial, constraints are a pretty simple thing to use, but yeah, very powerful. There's tons of things you can do with them, and they can really add some great detail to whatever game you're trying to make. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Again, I'm sorry for the lack of videos I had for like the week or two, a week or three or something like that. I don't know. But um, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please thumbs up and subscribe. Uh, also, please tell your friends about this channel if they want to learn how to script on Roblox or how to make games, whatever. Just tell them about it and tell them to subscribe as well. Uh, so thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you later.